Okay, so welcome back to my channel. I am Jason and this is from Sin's Perspective Reviews. So I am back with another recap of Rosemary and Time, Season 1, Episode 2, Arabica and the Early Spider. So if you are interested in hearing what I have to say and how I try to create a somewhat halfway decent look, please stay tuned. <laughs> Okay, so I have already prepped my skin and my eyes. I've already done my eyebrows, as you can see. And I'm just going to keep it really simple because my eyelid over here is quite uh, irritated. And that's because I was uh, trying out some uh, looks and just playing around in eyeshadow as I do. And now my lid is irritated from the applying and taking it off and applying and taking it off and applying and taking it off. So, I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do, just keep it real simple. But, you know, the majority of my looks are going to be extremely simple because I don't wear, one, um, I'm of a certain age, so it doesn't look good to wear a ton of makeup. Two, I typically don't wear a ton of makeup, especially in my everyday life, like, will be the point. And three, I, as you are aware, or I'm sure you're aware, your makeup for in everyday life is kind of is different than your makeup on camera because people tend to wear a lot more makeup so that it translates well and looks great on camera. But if you saw them in person, it looks like crap. So, anywho. So, okay. But that's not why you're here. Uh, of course, I'll list everything that I'm using down in the description box. So, Rosemary Time, episode two, uh, season one, episode two, Arabica, the early spider. So Rosemary and Laura have been hired to, uh, on, uh, hired on this estate to, I'm not sure if they're, I don't think they're necessarily restoring a garden. It is more, more so creating, uh, designing and creating a garden. And of course, there's a plot afoot as you, <laughs> as these stories always go. So, you know, they're just going through their their normal day. And of course, because they, they're actually not only restoring the garden, the con the Connellys who own the estate, they're actually doing also uh, construction on the property. So they have like a construction team there and the whole thing. And so uh, there was this guy who was working the backhoe. He started digging and when, don't you know, he found some bones. So of course they're like, okay, we got to call the cops. What are you, are the human bones? Are the animal bones? Where these bones come from? <laughs> so uh, the police come and they, uh, Patsy Connolly, uh, is talking to the police and she she's from that area. And so, of course, you know, being from the area, she's aware of the story. Some years ago, this, uh, this horse that was really known in the area that uh, I guess was pretty famous in the area just disappeared one day. Nobody knows what happens to this horse. Nobody knows. Um, nobody knows anything. All they know is just like a puff of smoke. This horse disappeared. And now the, they found horse bones buried on the property. And so she's kind of speculating. Do you think that this could be a replica? Which is the uh, name of the horse. And it's like, well, you know, I don't know. So, of course, they're trying to fill Laura and Rosemary in on who, who a replica uh, was. And, you know, the whole backstory um, behind that. And so, you know, after they go through the whole thing, uh, Patsy Connolly, uh, she leads Rosemary and Laura into the house where her husband, where uh, her husband Nev was there. He was just relaxing and she was updating him on, you know, what was going on and, and you know, that it was a horse and, you know, they're speculating whether or not it could be a Rebecca and, you know, the whole thing. So while they're in there talking, they're going over the plans for the garden. I already have a kind of a blueprint of how he wants the garden design, they hear this loud crash. So they run outside and the scaffolding outside the house, it collapsed and it collapsed while they were look, while they were lifting this custom design glass that the Connellys had made specifically for the, I guess this particular window. So of course the scaffolding collapsed, the man, the men on the scaffolding, at least the one collapsed. And of course the glass is now in, in pieces. And, you know, he was upset about the glass being broken because, of course, he was like, you know, it took six months for for us to even get this thing. And But I think he was more happy that nobody got hurt. 
And so Henry Georgeson, who owns the construction company, he's asking them, okay, so who did the scaffolding? And so they named some company and he, uh, and then while they were talking, their foreman, Tommy arrived and he was, they said that he was at um, Bishop Bridge uh, taking care of something at Dontonell. And but he was late and um, Tommy kind of, uh, uh, Tommy, uh, uh, Harry Georgeson kind of ripped him a new one for being late and asking him why he was late and the whole thing. And I told you not to hire this other company. There was another company that, company that actually did the scaffolding. So um, later that night, Rosemary and Time, they're in like a little cottage on, uh, on the property. And I mean, it's just a little one bedroom cottage. And so they're talking a little bit and they're, you know, speculating over... Um, of what you know the horse and why this horse uh why were their horse bones buried on the property the whole thing and they decide they turn in for the night but in the bit in the main house never still up he's, he's a pop star so he's in the recording studio working on some some music and he hears some noise so of course he runs out to investigate the noise uh uh the chase he gives chase he sees someone um, on the property he gives chase and then you know bang bang and Laura and well actually it wrote Rosemary woke up because she heard the gunshots. Now earlier that evening, earlier that day when the glass had broken, Neb did say that you know it seems like you know this place is cursed. It seems like we've had so many issues with this property. The basement flooding, the fire and there was something else. He said it almost seems like um, the people in town were true about the people, what, what the people were in town were saying were true because, you know, this place has been cursed. And so now you have, um, Nev now shot in the garden. So of course, uh, Rosemary goes out. She ends up, well, actually she woke, uh, Laura up because Laura slept right through it and they run out. Patsy, uh, Nev's wife come out and they find him dead, uh, on the ground. Laura is being interviewed by D.I. Tellery, Tellery, I can't remember the man's, man's name, but he was a jackass. And so he's saying that, you know, you heard the shot, but your friend insinuating that something that Rosemary and Laura has something other than a friendship going on. And so, okay, so I'm actually, this is my first time using it. This is the L'Oreal, Laura, Laura, I would say Lorelai, who? Age Perfect Radiant uh, Serum Foundation Sunscreen Broad Spectrum FPS 50 antioxidants concentrated serum and I got it in I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see that you probably not gonna be able to see that and hazelnut and how I did the shade match because it is so difficult to do this even when I go into the store I'm always I feel like the shade is always slightly off because I have red and yellow undertones and so I just went on Tempalia, Tempalia, Tempalia. I don't know how many people are familiar with that website. And what you do is you go in and you can actually use a foundation that you like or a foundation that uh, you feel fit you um, best. It may not be perfect, but a found, like your normal foundation. And it'll give you suggestions based on that if you decide to go like for another brand. And so this was, uh, Hazelnut was selected and this is one, uh, uh, 115, uh, 115, <laughs> I guess that's a number in the color. So we're going to try this. Okay. So, um, Rosemary is of course offended. Cause she's like, well, what are you trying to say? Like, there's nothing going on between me and this is looking red. I don't know. You probably, you can't even see that. Uh, Okay, maybe it's looking yellow in the screen, but in person, it's looking quite red. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see. And so... It's coming across quite yellow on, the, on camera, but it's not looking yellow over on this side, over here. I don't know. And it's quite thin. It's not like, I guess you could build it up maybe to medium coverage. I don't know. It's not, I mean, 
guess, hmm. I mean, it doesn't look bad. Cause it's kind of hard for me to it's looking like i said it's coming across lighter on camera than it actually is i need to i'm you guys i've been working on trying to get this thing um get the contrast and the coloring great uh it's, um the best i can but you know it's, you know like things are a work in progress things are always a work in progress okay so he's interviewing them and while he's in, well, he's interviewing uh, Rosemary, and while he's interviewing Rosemary, uh, Laura is in the house, and of course she's talking to Patsy, and of course she's grieving. He, she, you know, was feeling some kind of way because they you, obviously, you know, when the spouse dies, the uh, when a spouse is uh, murdered, I should say, um, then the first person, the first suspect, is going to be the spouse, right? So, of course, they were doing their job by interviewing her. But, of course, she's like, you know, what? I don't understand why they're, um, you know, treating me like I'm a criminal. And, like, I had something to do with this. And, you know, the whole thing. Like, I don't. Oh, man. I mean. Like I said, it doesn't look. You know what? Let's let's just keep it moving. And so, you know, Lord of. Uh. Laura is telling her, you know, they're just doing their job. You know, of course, she know that because she was used to be a cop. So she aware, she's aware that it's not personal. It's like they have to. It's to, it's a part of the process, and it's quite liquid. I mean, it's. I don't feel like it's gonna run off my arm, off my hand, but it is quite um, thin. Okay, so let's see. Um, so, um, at this point, Rosemary is good and disgusted because all his insinuations and, you know, uh, about his relate her relationship or what he considers to be some kind of relationship with, uh, with Laura. So, um, uh, Patsy decides that she wants, as a tribute to Nev, she wants them to complete the garden. So, of course, they decide they're going to go get on out there and get back to work. So, they get their spades, or their shovels, as we would call it here. <laughs> and they go out and they, you know, start it looking around. And then they notice that there was a spot in the ground area on the property where somebody looked like somebody already tried to start digging. And so, they was like, okay, well, I wonder why would somebody just, you know, why would somebody try to dig here? So, of course, Rosemary being inquisitive she's like i wonder what, what what's going on what's going on over here so she decides she's gonna dig to see what's what and don't you know she found more bones so now <laughs> the cops at this point have already you know they've done their interviews the whole thing is a whole you know the, the horse uh and you know the, the whole thing with the murder and all that and so now they have to call deal with the cops again because she done found more bones on the property. Di and Di taunt what's his name? Tel Telawani Telawani. I, I can't guess this man's name. They, him and Rosemary. He's talking to her again about okay. So girl, you done found y'all done found some more bones. Like what were you doing? Why did you decide to dig there? She was like, I already saw somebody started digging. And, you know, I was just, you know, curious. And he was like, oh, you consider yourself a detective or something. And she was like, well, no, I just, you know, it was there and I was there and I had the spade and I started digging and we found the bones. And so around this time, Tommy shows up. Now, Tommy is the foreman for uh, Henry G Georgeson's company. And uh, Samantha, his wife, was driving. And so Tommy is known to local law enforcement right and so uh gregson was like oh i see she's still driving you around right talking about the wife and he was like well yeah you know since i had my license expired to my license taken six months ago obviously you know i can't drive and so uh they trade they're going back and forth a little bit and he ends up tommy ends up telling his wife to go in the house to check on mrs uh Connolly just to, to see how she was doing to see if she needed anything and so, um, he asked him about, um, 
Harry, where Harry uh, Gregson was, she was like, oh, he's over over at Bishop's over at Bris, in Bis, Bishop's Bridge, taking care of business. Now, remember the day prior. Um, that's where Tommy. They said Tommy was taking care of business. Okay, so Rosemary and Laura, they're back to work and they're, they're talking, and Rose, uh, Laura, Rosemary was like, okay, so what do we know about the victim? And so Rose, uh, Laura was like, oh, we know that she was between 18 to 24 and um, that she, it looked like she had been dead five years. And so you know, they started talking, like, I wonder if that could be Joanne, the missing, uh, jo uh, could be Joanne. Now, Joanne is a woman who used to work at a place called, Be it was Belfridge's Stable. And the reason that's important is that when Laura and Rosemary, when they followed um, Patsy into the house, when they to talk to Nev about after they found the horse bones, uh, Rosemary saw... A, Laura saw a photo on their fireplace that had this young lady um, she was holding the horse and Nev was on the horse in some costume and they, you know they told her that that was uh, um, that was Joanne how, how she used to work at the farm and how they knew her and how you know her and uh, Patsy were friends and so you know Rose, Laura, Rosemary started posing all these questions um, and Basically, I wonder, you know, what happened to her and, you know, what happened, you know, she worked at Belfridge's estate and the whole thing. And, of course, um, initially, Laura kept saying, you know what, it's none of our business. We should just stay out of it. But eventually, Laura was like, you know what, I'll go and talk to Belfridge and I'll meet you at the pub afterwards. And so, Laura goes over to Belfridge and, you know, talks to him a little bit. And he was upset. You could tell he was disgruntled. He was angry and just... He had just had it. He, he was he was not in the best mood. He was not company ready. He was not company ready, okay? Because she did just pop up. And so, she started talking to him about, you know, them, them finding a horse. And if he thinks that that could be a Rebecca. And then, of course, they found the young lady's bones. And he was like, well, you know, it's a simple way to find out who the horse is. All you have to do is, if, if uh, Harry Gregson wanted to unhand some money so that they could do a DNA test. And they could easily find out who the horse belongs to. And she was like, well... Why would Henry Gregson um, pay for the DNA test? And then she he tells her because Arabica was his horse. And so she's like, oh, okay. He, and then he eventually tells her, you know what? Just clear off. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Just, you know, basically get off my property. I'm done talking to you. She's at, So Laura arrives at the pub and... Rosemary is saying, I wonder why he didn't say anything when they found the bones. Like, that could be a replica, that could be my horse that missed, that disappeared, you know, so many years ago. And Laura was like, I wonder if all those disasters are connected to the horse and the bones that they found. Now, remember when um, Nav, I'll tell you, Nav was complaining about the fires and the floods and the whole thing on the property. And it's like, it seemed like it was one thing after another. And the scaffolding falling apart. And it's, it's been a lot. So she's like, I wonder if that's all connected. And so she got up to get them another drink. Laura got up to get them another drink. And she saw Harry Gregson. And he was sitting with a woman. And so they go over to talk to him. You know, to talk to him, aka question him. Lord, these braids. Um, to question him. A little bit, get some little four one one on on the situation, and so um, they find out that the woman sitting with him is Fiona, his wife, and they started asking him about you know the horse and about Arabica and how Arabica disappeared and you know how the woman uh, that they found and it could be Joanna and you can see Fiona's facial expression kind of changing like she's like okay what um, she looked concerned a little bit she looked like she was getting a little sick a little ill. And then Rosemary's like, I wonder what this is. So she pulls this thing, this button out of her bag, out of her pocket that she took from the crime scene. This before the cops got there. And she's like, this is a unique button and it's made out of some kind of bone. And, you know, it looks like it goes to a coat. And I wonder if you've ever seen this. And as soon as she pulled that out, Fiona got looked like she's about to vaunt, throw up. And so she excused herself and was like, oh, I have to go to, I need to go to the restroom. And of course... Gregson, uh, Harry's like, nah, I don't, mm -mm, I don't know what that is. I'm talking about. 
Okay, so Laura and Rosemary, they they head out. They leave the pub. They're going back to the estate. And Lorelai is tearing into Rosemary for removing evidence from a crime scene. And she's like, well, you uh, know that you can get some six months in jail for t evidence tampering or something to that effect. And so they get back to the uh, house. And of course, outside the gate, there are reporters everywhere trying to ask some questions. They get through the gate and now they're sitting down for dinner with Patsy and the housekeeper. And the housekeeper um, started talking about, uh, she, the people in town are talking and somebody that knows somebody that works at the police station, they're saying that the police, um, uh, they strongly believe that the remains belong to Joanne, Joanna. And so Patsy got sick and she, and she ends up having to excuse herself from the table. So it's like, okay, well, what was the relationship between Patsy and Joanna? I mean, we know that they, she knew her, but she kind of got, got, took it personally. She got sick and had to excuse herself. And so later that night, Rosemary was looking at the computer and she's a, she was printing something off. And the next thing you know, you hear shots ring out and fly, come through the cottage window. And so in her haste, I guess her hysteria or something from the bullets coming through the, the window, Rosemary runs out and starts yelling, is that the best you could do or something, something crazy? So Laura, uh, Laura ended up having to grab her. She pulled her into the cottage and turned the lights off. I guess until she was sure that the person who shot in there was gone. And so she ends up making her a drink and telling her, what the hell were you thinking? You could have been killed. And she was like, you know, I really wasn't. She was just adrenaline. She was scared. And she it was, she just reacted. And it was a stupid reaction. And she was like, well, we need to go and talk to um, uh, Fiona. And so Fiona Gregson, this is George uh, Harry Gregson, the, the guy that owns the construction company. And the reason why is that what she printed off was a photo and it had a, it was a photo of a horse, and it had Belfridge, and it had Fiona in there. And the coat that Fiona was wearing had the exact same buttons as uh, what Rosemary found in the grave. Okay, and so the next day they're on their way to Fiona, and so they're talking, and you know she's finding out that Belfridge actually this is a uh, Belfridge trained Arabica, someone stole, ended up stealing Arabica, and George, Harry Gregson ended, ended up suing Belfridge for half a million dollars. Because I guess, you know, he, I guess if this place wasn't as secure as they, as he claimed, and somebody was able to get in and steal this horse, that again, at this point, they're speculating that they, they haven't proven anything, it's all speculation. And so he ends up suing Gregson. So you can understand why Gregson has such a uh, resentment towards, uh, he is suing Gregson is suing Belfridge. So you can understand why Belfridge has such an, uh, has animosity towards, um, Gregson. So while they're talking, you see Gregson, he's on his, not Gregson, Belfridge is on his way somewhere. And next thing you know, this truck speeds up beside him and it's Patsy. And next thing you know, she's ramming into him and trying to get him, run him off the road. And she succeeds. Next thing you know, uh, Belfridge is in a ditch. So Rosemary and Laura, they're still you know, talking. They're on their way to, uh, still on their way to Fiona. But of course, they come across the scene. Of course, uh, Patsy is long gone. And so, I'm looking forward. Okay, so I got these concealers. I actually got three. Um, I left the darker one in another room. But these are the Milani Conceal and Conceal Perfect Long Wear concealers and I think I got 160 and 165 and so let's look at this so this is the first one is 160 oh which is it looks more yellow and 165 looks more red and so I don't know I don't know why I keep doing it because I don't think you guys I don't know if you if you can see the difference. So the top one is the 160. The bottom one is the 165. So I want to lighten. So let's see how the 160. Let's see how the 160 looks. So they come across the accident. And so he's he was in there. He was relatively fine. He had a broken arm. And he was basically telling them to get him out of there. 
And to be careful because his arm is, uh, his arm's broken. And of course, he still had the same nasty ass attitude as when, um, Laura went to talk to him. So they get him in the truck and take him to the hospital. So around this time, um, the police are back at the Connelly's estate and they are looking for something. And around this time, I think I put, maybe put too much on. Around this time, um, Laura and Rosemary show up and the housekeepers are, you know, telling her that, you know, Mrs. Connelly is in the in the sitting room and so they go in to find out okay well, what's going on she's like I don't know they're looking for something seems like they're always looking for something and then she starts talking to them about and then they start talking to her about finding a nav uh not nav Belfridge on the side of the road and saying that you put him there and she was like well you know he deserved it and the whole thing and and then she started telling him oh, oh I guess you don't know the history and it's like well, what are you talking about apparently Fiona, Henry, I keep on naming Henry, Harry Gregson's wife actually ran off. She left Harry and went, ran off with Belfridge. And it was only after Harry sued Belfridge and Belfridge ended up having the, having the financial issues that she left and went back to Harry. And she talked about Fiona and how Belfridge was like corner Fiona. Uh, Fiona. She talked about Joanna and how Belfridge, uh, when Joanna worked at work there, how Belfridge would corner her and say the most disgusting, inappropriate things to her. And, you know, Joanna was her friend. And so she said, I always felt like, you know, he had something to do with her disappearance. Now, there's no evidence of that. But she, I guess after they talked to her and they, you know, um, that night when she got sick, she just assumed that Belfridge, you know, I guess that was what she needed to confirm that Belfridge may have had something to do with Joanna dis disappearing. And uh, that's why she went after him and ran his behind in a ditch. And so around this time, uh, Detective detective Inspector Trelawney, I call them, I can call them in three different, pronounce his name three different damn ways. Uh, he came in and he hit, was like, "Do you have? Do you recognize this?" And he had a gun in the sandwich bag, and she was like, "No." He was like, "Well, this gun is the same caliber as the gun that killed Nev, and we we gonna need you to come with us on down to the station to explain this situation." So, um, Rosemary and Rosemary and uh, Laura now standing outside. They got uh got uh, Patsy in the car, and they're taking her away. Tommy walks over and was like, well, what, what's going on with her? Why did they take, what's, you know, why did they uh, arrest her? And it's like, oh, well, you know, they need to, uh, they found a gun or so something. I forget what they said. And he was like, you know what? Sometimes these cops don't know. They basically were saying they don't know their ass from their elbows and they just do crappy jobs. And, you know, they just, they're just lousy. And, um, he walk, he walks off. Rosemary and, uh, Laura are sitting around, they're still, you know, as they were pulling off, this is the cops pulling off. They, she's like, well, at least Rosemary is like, you know what? I don't, um, she don't think that Patsy had anything to do with the murder. And she, you know, she's still giving her theory. Laura is still trying to really, for the most part, stay out of it. And she was like, the only thing that we going to do is take you to the station so that you can give them that button and hope they don't throw you in jail. Uh, for tampering with evidence. And so she made her get in the car. And so they go on. So they get on, on their way to the station. So. Uh, detective inspector. Is in there talking to. Um, talking to. Patsy. And asking her, asking her. You know about you know her whereabouts. And you know. Why was he up you know late. Or you know. What was he doing up late. And what were you doing. And she was like well he was working. And. You know, he was, um, he was, uh, working on his, uh, working on some new music or something. And then he says, you know, were you and Mr. Connolly having any mar uh, marital problems? Like everything he says always seems like it has a double meaning. He's just, just a jerk, right? 
And so she's like, no. So as he was leaving out, he, uh, leaving out, leaving out the end of the interrogation room with Patsy, he saw Laura and Rosemary sitting out there. So he called, she calls them in to the office and they talk. And he, she, uh, Rosemary says, we were shot out, shot at, shot at last night. And he's like, well, you know, some people are just intolerable. Uh, some people um, are just intolerant about certain things. And they're like, well, what are you talking about? Tolerant about what? And then he starts going on about homosexuality and the whole... Because he's still on this kick that they are lovers and that they were attacked. It was like a hate crime. Um, they were attacked because they're, in his mind, lovers, right? So at this point, Laura, having witnessed this com conversation herself, she was so disgusted that when Rosemary was about to give the evidence, she was like, you know what? Never mind. We just go. We you basically we sorry to bother you. We just wanted to tell you know talk about the shooting and we just gonna be on our way. So Rosemary was kind of confused, like okay, what well, the whole point was coming? She was like, no, no, I'm not giving that jerk nothing, right? So um, <laughs> they finally make it to uh, the Gr the Gr Georgeson's uh, home to talk to Fiona, and so they knocked on the door a little, uh, and nobody came to the door. And uh, Laura, uh, Rosemary kind of was looking through the window and she was like, oh, she, and you can see Fiona sitting there in a sitting chair drinking. And so eventually she buzzed the door and let them in and they started talking. And she talked about how she did, she did confirm that she did run off with Gregson, uh, Belfridge and um, how she gave the coat away. And she gave the coat to Patsy's housekeeper and as they were leaving uh rosemary asked her okay so when you ran away why did you come back to your husband and she basically said because i'm a coward like you know she, she to look at her it's like she never really had no real job she's probably had men taking care of her all her life and when belfridge lost that ability to support her basically she went back to her husband. Like, I, you know, I, I'm not for the struggle life. I'm not for the struggle love. And I'm just not, you know, it was, it was good. You know, I loved him, I guess. But I'm not trying to work. So, and she basically said, I'm a coward. Like, I came back because I'm a coward. And what a thing to say. Like, girl, not because I loved my husband. I realized it was a mistake. I realized, you know, running off was a mistake and I realized that I really loved my husband and I want, I wanted to, you know, really wanted to be here and I wanted to give our marriage another chance. She was like, no, nah, I'm a cow girl. I'm not trying to, she didn't say all that, but you kind of get the inference like, girl, I ought to stay with Gregson to stay with Belfridge. I would have had to go work somewhere and I'm not doing that. You know that I man? He, he just, he couldn't afford to, I couldn't afford to be kept anymore. And so I had to come back. I had to eat crow and I had to come back to what she could kind of describe her pig of a husband. And I'm like, okay, girl, that sounds absolutely horrible. So, um, so now they're talking to the housekeeper and she said, she told them that the coat, you know, that coat, she sold it to, um, Mrs. Matthews. Mrs. Matthews is Tommy's wife, who is the foreman. Tommy is the foreman. If you remember, Tommy is the foreman for Gregson, Gregson's construction company. And so they're like, okay. So uh, as they were leaving, Rosemary is now throwing out some more of her theories. Okay. So she was saying that she believes that Harry arranged to have a Rebecca stolen. I don't know. I'm so scared I'm going to uh, put more on here than I expected. Let me just do it the way I normally do it. Um, that Harry arranged to have his horse, Arabica, stolen so that he can then sue Be uh, Belfridge and get his wife back all at the same time. Because when he sued Belfridge, well, when, when Gregson sued Belfridge, Belfridge ended up having to file bankruptcy. So... Um, yeah, so he was able to, the man, he was able to 
stick it to the man that he felt stole, took something from him, aka his wife, and he was able to get a couple dollars on top of that, right? And, you know, she was like, uh, Rosemary was like, okay, so what about Joanne? What, what, what's her part in it? And she's like, well, maybe, you know, Joanna worked there, so maybe she saw something that she shouldn't have, and that's what got her killed. And then she started talking about the coat, and um, Rosemary was like, well, that depends on when the coat was sold. If it was after the murder, then Fiona is still implicated in the murder. If it was sold before the murder, then the Matthews could easily be implicated. In, uh, implicated. And so, of course, now they feel like they need to go and have a conversation with Mrs. Matthews. So, Mrs. they go to uh, the house, and they saw the, the red car. Uh, they saw the car was parked in the driveway. And it, uh, Rosemary, some flower, it was a flower attached to the car that drew Rosemary's attention. And she was like, okay, well, this, ro this flower was in a specific place on the Connolly's estate. And it was... It was by um, where the, the bones of the girl, the young lady was. So she, it seems like they drove in, tried to reverse. And when they reversed to leave, they, you know, backed into this flower. And that's how this flower got attached to their, their, uh, the bumper of the car. And that was the night that Nev um, was murdered. And so... Um, And so they find, so they go and knock on the door. No, there's nobody to come to the door. They go around back. Miss Matthews is sunbathing out by out in the out in the back, and they walk in. Of course, as soon as she see them, she starts, "What are you doing here? And get out of my uh, my garden before I have you arrested for trespassing." And you know they. And so while she's going on with her little hysterics, they're like asking her about okay, this cold and you know, the bodies and the whole thing. And she's like, you can see she's about to, <laughs> uh, she, she's about to break down. Right. So she's like, get out of my garden. I don't have to say anything to you. And da, 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 da. And, you know, and they start asking her about the cold and she was like, that coat was sold a long time ago. And it's like, Oh, so you know, which, which coat? Cause they didn't, they, you know, they, Oh, they did show her. They showed her the, the photo. And so that coat was gone, has long, is long gone. So that was her way of kind of confirming that, you know, she did, the coat was in her possession. And that's, you know, Tommy arrives, her husband, and he's like, well, what is going on? So she goes in and she was like, well, they're, you know, they're asking a bunch of questions and they're accusing us of murder. And so he told her to shut up. I mean, don't say anything else. And then Laura, at this point, uh, Samantha, this is the husband, uh, the wife, uh, Tommy's wife, she had already taken the photo and balled it up and threw it on the ground. So Laura picked the photo up and she's like, you know, unraveling this photo to kind of distract Tommy. So she ends up kneeing him in the groin. They take off, jump in, uh, jump in the truck, take off. Tommy is hot on their heels. Laura and Rosemary are in the truck. Tommy's in the little car, uh, little sedan, little, little vehicle. And so she realized that they had the upper hand. So she, when they were going back down the country road, she just went off road into this field and he ended up getting stuck. But on the way they had, they were, they sped past a police car and he actually took the car, the door off the police car. So of course, at this point, the police has already called in that there's this uh, speed, high speed chase going on and the whole thing. And so by the time he gets stuck in the, um, the mud, the police are hot on their heels and, and they end up taking him into custody. Okay, so Rosemary and uh, Laura are back at the Connolly's estate and they're kind of going over the, um, they're kind of going over the, the case and what they found out. And basically what they found out was that Gregson did pay, uh, um, Gregson did pay Tommy to steal the horse. Um, he paid them to steal the horse. Joanna helped him steal the horse. And she, after she saw what was going on with, um, Belfridge, she got, a, a she had a guilty conscience. And so she was going to go to the police to confess everything. 
But Tommy was like, girl, I'm not going to jail. So Tommy in, ended up killing Joanna to keep her quiet. And of course, to keep his ass out of jail. And Greg's, even though Greg, yeah, obviously Gregson knew about, he hired him to, to, to uh, steal the horse. Gregson didn't have any part to do with Joanna being murdered. He probably didn't even know that Joanna was, um, um, was murdered. I think at this point, everybody just assumed that she was, he was, you know, with the same as everybody else, that she had just disappeared. And so, of course, do you think that, um, Tommy is, um, taking responsibility for, um, no, 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 no. He's at the police station blaming his wife for everything. He's trying to stick, blame all of this drama and this craziness on his beloved wife, Samantha. So what an absolute coward. So, I mean, they, we didn't see the finished, uh, the finished garden, but, um, we saw them, they were, you know, still talking. She, cause at this point they were talking to, um, Patsy about, about, um, what was going on. And, you know, they talked a little bit and laughed a little bit. And that was basically how this episode ended. Okay. So this is the final look. Um, it's, Probably takes about 15 to 20 minutes if I wasn't trying to record. And uh, kind of looking through my products, I thought I had everything out and kind of trying new products. It would take about 15 to 20 minutes. So a very simple look. Of course, I'll list everything in the description box. And I guess I will see you guys in the next video.